Quasi hereditary algebras, lecture five, problem session. Problem one. Determine all standard and co-standard modules with respect to the given order on simples for the path algebra of the following quiver with relations. We have four vertices, one, two, three, and four. And we also have five arrows. The arrow A from one to two, the arrow B from two to one, the arrow C from three to two, the arrow D from three to four, and the arrow F from four to two. And we have one relation. A after B is zero. To solve this problem, we compute the diagrams of projective modules. The projective module P1 starts at the vertex 1, and now we follow the arrows. We can go by A and come to 2. So P1 has L1 on top, and then going by A, we go to 2. And from 2, we can go by B and come to 1. And then from 2, we go by B and we come to L1. And then we hit the relation A after B is 0, so we cannot do anything else. So P1 has one on top, two in the middle, and one in the socle. P2. Starting from two, we can go by B to one, and that's it because we cannot do A after B. So P2 has two in the top and one in the socle, and that is it. P3. We start at three, and now we can go by C to two or by D to four. So from three, we go by C to two or by D to four. From 2, we can go by B to 1, and then it's stop because of the relation. From 4, we can go by F to 2, now by B to 1, and then it again stops. So this is the projective module P3. And the projective module P4, we start from 4. From 4, we can go by F to 2, and from 2 by B to 1. And then we are stuck because we cannot do anything else because of the relation. So this gives us our four projective modules. Now let's take these projective modules and also color the traces. So we have the natural order one, then two, then three, then four. So we take the first projective module. This will be our standard module delta four. And we take the trace of the projective module P4 everywhere. So in fact, we will only have this trace inside P3, and that this is the part 4 to 1 of P4 inside P3. So there are no 3s in 1, 2, and 4, so P3 will not have any other traces apart from itself. Now we have the projective module P2, and it has a trace inside P1, which is this copy of 2, 1. And of course, it also has a trace here, 2, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 1. But this is not relevant for us because we are looking at the traces only in the smaller projectives. And now, when we factor out these traces, we will get our standard modules. So P4 is delta 4. When we factor out the trace of P4 inside P3, we get delta 3. So delta 3 has 3 on top, 2 in the middle, and 1 in the circle. P2 is delta 2, because there are no 3s and no 4s in P2. And delta 1 is the quotient of P1 by delta 2. So delta 1 is just the simple top L1 of P1. Next, we need to compute the injective modules. And for this, we should start from the vertices and go against the arrows. So if we start at the vertex 1, we can go against the arrow B to the vertex 2. There we can go against the arrow A to the vertex 1. And here it stops because A after B is forbidden. Also from 2 we can go against F to 4. And then from 4 against D to 3. And then 3 is a source, so everything stops. And also from 2, we can go directly to 3 via C, and since 3 is a source, everything stops. So this is the injective module I1. The injective module I2 is a quotient of I1 by its socle. So we start from 2, 
we can go against A to 1, and then we can continue because of the relation AB is equal to 0. Also from 2, we can go against F to 4 and against D to 3, and we stop because 3 is a source. Or directly from 2, we go against C to 3 and stop there. So 3 is the source vertex, so I3 is equal to L3. And for the injective module in 4, we start with 4 in the circle, and we go against the arrow D to 3 and stop there. And now we can write down the co-standard modules. So nabla 4 is equal to I4. So since I3 is simple, nabla 3 is equal to I3, and this is just the simple module. So nabla 2 is the kernel of all possible maps from I2 to I3 and I4. So we delete 3 and we delete 4 and everything about it. What is left is 2 in the circle and 1 above it. So that is nabla 2. And nabla 1 is the kernel of the maps from I1 to I2, I3, and I4. We have a projection on I2 and then the kernel is just L1. So nabla 1 is just L1. And this completes problem 1. Problem 2. Determine whether the following path algebra A with relations is quasi-hereditary for some choice of linear order on symbols. We have three vertices, 1, 2, and 3, an arrow A from 1 to 2, an arrow B from 2 to 3, and an arrow C from 3 to 1. And we have one relation, C after B after A is equal to 0. Solution. We will, of course, check the equivalent properties that the category of all A modules is a highest weight category. So we've tried to find some order for which the category of all A modules is a highest weight category. For this, we need to determine what will be the deltas for that order. So we start by computing the diagrams of projective modules. For P1, we start at the vertex 1. We can go by A to the vertex 2, then by B to 3, and then it stops because of the relation CBA is equal to zero. So P1 has stop 1, circle 3, and the middle part 2. For P2, we start at 2. We go by B to 3, by C to 1, then by A to 2, then by B to 3, and now we hit the relation CBA is equal to zero. So this stops. So P2 is a uniserial module of Levy length 5 with stop 2, circle 3, and then the middle part 3, 1, 2 in the radical order. And P3, so for P3 we start with 3, we go by C to 1, then by A to 2, then by B to 3, and then we hit our relation CBA is equal to 0, so everything stops. So P3 has top 3, circle 3 and the middle part 1 and 2 in the radical order. So these are our projective modules. What we can see here is that, for example, in P3, L3 appears twice. So this cannot be a delta in a quasi-hereditary algebra. In P2, L2 appears twice. This cannot be a delta in a quasi-hereditary algebra. But in P1, L1 appears only once. So P1 can be a delta in a quasi-hereditary algebra. So this is our smallest projective, which can be a delta and satisfies the necessary condition for the standard module that L1 appears only once. So we can try to check whether making P1 the maximal element, the second condition, which is that the trace of P1 in everything else is projective, is satisfied. If we look at the trace of P1 in P2 and P3, and we see that in P2 we have P1 as a submodule, and that's it, and in P3 we have P1 as a submodule, and that's it. So this means that we can indeed declare 1 to be the maximal element in our order, and then we will have that P1 is equal to delta 1, and the trace of P1 in all projectives is projective, and L1 has multiplicity 1 in P1. So the starting point of the induction for the quasi-hereditary algebra is satisfied. Next, 
let us factor out our trace of P1 from all the projectives. And what we will get is the following. So P2 modulo delta 1 will have 2 on top and 3 in the circle. That's it. And P3 modulo delta 1 is just a simple module L3. And here we actually have some flexibility. We can choose the next element in our linear order to be 2 or 3, doesn't matter. So we take 3 as the next highest weight element after 1. 1 is the maximal one, and then we take 3 the next one. So we see that 3 appears in this quotient only once, so this is a good candidate for a standard module. And then let us look at the trace of this simple module L3, which is P3 modulo delta 1, which we want to be delta 3. So we look at the trace of P3 modulo delta 1 in both modules, and of course this trace is then a direct sum of copies of the simple module L3. So the second condition is again satisfied. So we can declare 3 to be the next highest weight element. And our standard module delta 3 is just P3 modulo delta 1, which is a simple module L3. And now if you factor out the trace of delta 3 from P2 modulo delta 1, what remains is just the simple module L2. So this is a simple module. The multiplicity of the corresponding simple L2 in this module is 1. So this is a good candidate for the last standard module. So this means that we can declare 2 to be the minimum element in our linear order. So the last standard module will be simple. And we conclude that our algebra A is indeed quasi-hereditary. With respect to the order where the minimum element is 2, the middle element is 3, and the maximum element is 1. Problem 3. Determine whether the following path algebra A with relations is quasi-hereditary for some choice of linear order on simples. This is very similar to the previous problem, just the relation is changed. So we again have three vertices, 1, 2, and 3, and three arrows, A from 1 to 2, B from 2 to 3, and C from 3 to 1. But our relation is now ACBA is equal to 0. It's a bit longer than the previous relation. So we try to solve this problem in a similar way as we solved the previous problem. We start by computing the diagrams of projective modules. So for P1, we start at 1, we can go to 2 via A, then to 3 via B, then to 1 via C, and then we hit the relation. So for P2, we start at 2, go to 3 via B, to 1 via C, then to 2 via A, then to 3 via B, then to 1 via C, and only then we hit the relation. And finally, for P3, we start at 3, go to 1 using C, then to 2 using A, then to 3 using B, then to 1 using C, and then we hit the relation. So here our projectives are a bit longer than in the previous problem. So similarly, we cannot have 3 or 2 as maximal elements because these projectives have their simples with higher multiplicities than 1. So this was exactly the argument which we used in the previous case to exclude 3 and 2 from being maximum element in our quasi-hereditary order. But now P1 also has the same property. 1, L1, appears in P1 with multiplicity 2. This means that the condition that L1 should appear in its standard module with multiplicity 1 is not satisfied for P1 for this example. This means that none of the projective modules can be the standard module for the quasi-hereditary structure. So this algebra is not quasi-hereditary. Problem 4. Let A mod be a highest weight category with respect to the natural order on L1, L2, and so on, Lm. Let B be the quotient of A modulo the trace of the maximal projective Pm in A. 
prove that the global dimension of B is less than or equal to the global dimension of A. Solution. Recall that the simple B modules are exactly the modules L1, L2, and so on, Lm minus 1. By the inductive nature of highest weight categories, we know that B mod is a highest weight category with respect to the restricted order from A mod, so we will get the natural order on L1, L2, and so on, Lm minus 1. In particular, B mod has finite global dimension, so any highest weight category has finite global dimension. This means that we can take a B module M, which is a B module of maximal possible projective dimension. Let's call this dimension K. In particular, K is the global dimension of B. So since K is the projective dimension of M, there should be a simple B module, let's say Li, such that the case X from M to Li is non-zero. But we also know by this recursive property of quasi-hereditary algebras that the case extension space over B from M to Li is equal to the case extension space over A from M to Li. And this means that case extension space over A from M to Li is non-zero. In other words, that the projective dimension of the same module M, but now considered as an A module, is at least K. And this means that the global dimension of A is at least K, and K is the global dimension of B by our choice of M. This completes problem four. Problem five. Let A be a finite dimensional algebra. Assume that for any simple A module, there is a K greater than zero, such that the k extensions over A from this simple module to itself are non-zero. Prove that A is not quasi-hereditary for any choice of linear order on the set of simple modules. Solution. Let us choose some linear order L1, L2, and so on, Lm, on the set of isomorphism classes of simple A modules, and let us assume that A is quasi-hereditary for this order. Let curly A be the third subcategory of A mod, which is generated by the simple module L1. This is the minimum element in our linear order. Now let us look in more details at the standard module delta 1. Since L1 is minimal, the only allowed simple subquotients of delta 1 are L1. And since our algebra is quasi-hereditary, L1 must appear in delta 1 with multiplicity 1. So this implies that delta 1 is just equal to L1. And by the inductive nature of quasi-hereditary algebras, the module delta 1 is projective in our category curly A. In other words, our curly A is a semi-simple category. So the simple module is projective. At the same time, by the inductive nature of quasi-hereditary algebras, the space of degree k extensions in curly A from L to L is equal to, is isomorphic to the space of degree k extensions over A from L to L for any k. Since curly A is semi-simple, the left-hand side here is zero for all k. But by our assumptions, the right-hand side is non-zero for some k. And this gives us a contradiction. Problem six. Compute all projective and standard modules with respect to the given order on simples for the path algebra A of the following quiver with relations. So we have three vertices, one, two, and three. The arrows A and B from one to two, the arrows C from two to three, and the arrow Z from three to two, and the arrows x and y from 2 to 1. And the relations are ax is equal to ay is equal to bx is equal to by is equal to cz is equal to 0. In other words, if we go to the left via an arrow, it is forbidden then to go to the right. To show that this algebra A is quasi-hereditary and use the computation of projective and standard modules to determine the multiplicities of simples 
in the costandard modules over this algebra. Solution. We, of course, start with drawing the diagrams for projective modules. So for P1, we start with 1. We can go by A to 2. From 2, we can go by X or Y back to 1, or by C to 3. From 3, we can go by Z to 2. And from 2, we can go by X or Y to 1. So when we went from 1 by B to 2, we can do the same thing as before. So from 2, we can go by X and Y to 1, or by C to 3. From 3, we go by Z to 2, and then by X or Y to 1. That's the projective module P1. So P2 starts with 2. From 2, we can go by X or Y to 1, and then we can continue, or by C to 3. From 3, we go by Z to 2, and then by X or Y to 1, and there it stops. And P3 starts at 3. From 3, we can go by Z to 2, and then by X and Y to 1, and then that's it. So now let us color the standard module delta 3 and its trace in all projectives. Delta 3 is here given by a teal color. And then we have a copy of delta 3 in P2. Here it is. And we have two copies of delta 3 in P1. Here they are. And so we see that the trace of delta 3 in A is projective. And also we see that the multiplicity of L3 in delta 3 is 1. So that's good. That satisfies the conditions in the definition of the quasi-hereditary algebra. Now we factor this trace out, and what remains are the quotients of projectives, so P1 modulo delta 3 and P2 modulo delta 3. So P2 modulo delta 3 has 2 in the top, and then going by x and y, we can go to 1. And P1 has 1 in the top, we, we can go by a or b to 2, and from both 2s we can go by x and y back to 1, and then that's it. And now we see that delta 2 is just P2 modulo delta 3. And then the trace of this module in P1 modulo delta 3 is the, the direct sum of two copies of delta 2. And also the multiplicity of L2 in delta 2 is 1. And now we can factor out the delta 2 from the picture, and we will be left simply with the simple module L1 as delta 1. And of course, delta 1 has only one copy of L1, as we see. And this means that our algebra A is quasi-hereditary for our order. And also from our analysis of standard modules and simple filtrations of standard modules, we can see that we have the following multiplicities of standards in projective modules. So for P1, we have one copy of delta 1 and two copies of both delta 2 and delta 3. Here is a picture. This is our P1. It has one copy of delta 1. Here is a copy of delta 2. Here is a copy of delta 2. And here are two copies of delta 3. Next, P2 has one copy of delta 2 and one copy of delta 3. And no copies of delta 1. So P2 has one copy of delta 2 and one copy of delta 3. And P3 has one copy of delta 3 and no copies of delta 1 or delta 2. And now we can use the BGG reciprocity or Brouwer Humphreys BGG reciprocity and determine the multiplicities of simple modules in the cost standard modules. So we have to transpose this matrix. So we will have that NABLA1 has one copy of L1 and no L2s, no L3s. NABLA2 has one copy of L2, no L3s, but two copies of L1. NABLA3 has one copy of L3, one copy of L2, and two copies of L1. And this completes problem 6. Here are some extra problems and questions. Problem question one, check with all details that in problem two, the algebra A is also quasi-hereditary for the order where three is the minimum element, then two is in the middle, and one is the maximum element. Problem question two, 
prove that an algebra A with one isomorphism class of simple modules is quasi-hereditary if and only if it is simple. Problem question three, determine all linear orders for which the path algebra of the quiver with three vertices, one, two, and three, and two arrows, A from one to two, and B from two to three, with relation B after A is zero, is quasi-hereditary. Problem question four, Prove that the direct sum of two quasi-hereditary algebras is quasi-hereditary. And problem question five, classify all self-injective quasi-hereditary algebras. Thank you very much and see you next time.